you. Of course. And just to take the temperature of the room, and this is a non-judgment zone, who here uh, is a Bad With Money podcast listener? Oh, yes. Okay, wonderful. Who here has already read the Bad With Money book? Okay, perfect. No, this is great. This is good. Yeah, because if you all had read the book already, I'd be like, well, I get to freestyle some new questions. <laughs> you get to freestyle a new book. <laughs> um, so, okay. So, let's let's get started. No spoilers. No, oh, all spoilers. All spoilers. Great. All spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> no Buckle content. Yeah, yeah just what is it? Cover your ears. <laughs> what is it? What's the question? Uh, first We're friends in real life. This is not like me being aggressive to someone they hired. <laughs> no. It is just you being aggressive to someone you've known for years. Um, what? Okay, first question. Yeah. Are, how do you feel? You've been doing press for this book. It's can, can we say the good news that you told me backstage? What did I say? Okay, I'll just say no, it. No, wait, what, wait, what is it? Oh, yeah, you could say it. So it's like the book's already gone into a second or maybe third printing, which is so exciting. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, you have been, and so you've been in New York and LA doing a, doing a lot of press. Mm -hmm. How is it, as a person who interviews, how do you feel about being interviewed so much? Oh, I think people are not good at it. Yeah. <laughs> um, Fucking ouch. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, you can go. Uh, no, I mean, I. it's very strange. I really feel for Lady Gaga in her one story about Bradley Cooper. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I listen, I like listen to the question and then I talk and then I go, did I black out? Um, that, it, I will <laughs> say that sounds less like a problem with the interview. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it's, it's, uh, I, it's weird because I don't think any, I want to ask them questions back. Yeah. Like, I don't think anyone would care or something. Mm -hmm. So I'm always like, like today on the stock, ex I went to the stock exchange, big brag, and I like got interviewed and I like the fearless first thing, girl over here. Yeah, right. <laughs> and the first thing I was like, where did you get your suit? And the guy was so jarred. Like, what? <laughs> um, Ma Macy's, it's Calvin Klein. Like, he was very, <laughs> and I was like, I love the color. Anyway, what were we doing? Like, I just That's don't, so funny. I don't like if it's not like a back and forth. So right. It feels very weird to just them for because they kind of go no no i we're just asking you questions ma'am like a police officer <laughs> <laughs> i asked the questions yeah. here i'm anderson cooper yeah. <laughs> like they're like, like how do you get your hair so silver <laughs> yeah I just start being like oh cool like i just start complimenting them as a weird <laughs> instinct that's so funny i was substantially curious about that um so for people who are podcast listeners, let, we're, let's ease in here. What? Ga so it's such a wonderful project, and it's it's a Thanks. thing that really resonates. You're welcome, and it's a thing that really resonates with people, yeah. and, and it's I think a thing a lot of people feel like. Who here uh, feels personally bad with money? By round of applause or show of hands, or put your hands up and clap them. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's a lot of people. So like, what was the impetus for the podcast originally? Uh. Yeah, I mean, I would cry about money all the time. Mm -hmm. It was like my big thing that I would just like h cry. About. Well, okay, so one thing that happened was I never talked to anybody about my money problems. I never, I kept it to myself. I assumed everybody had, you know, had the same thing and we just all kept it to ourselves or they were independently wealthy somehow and just also kept it from us. Uh, and so I, I had my bank account open at work and, oh, no, no, no. Okay, so I was hooking up with this dude and he had his bank account open at work. And it said, <laughs> <laughs> and it's, look, am I a role model? No. Okay, and it said, uh, it said his, uh, I saw a number and I went, oh, I have that too. And he was like, you have that much money? And I was like, no, that's my credit card debt. And he was like, no, that's my savings account. And I went, uh-oh, <laughs> what, what you said. Yeah. And, um. And so then I, I, that someone, then he told my best friend who was sitting next to us, he told Allison and she went, what? And then everyone in that little sphere was talking mm -hmm. about it. And I was like, fuck. Uh, and so I, I, but then they, that was like the first time someone had been like, Hey, this is probably not good. And I knew in my heart it wasn't good. Right. You weren't so, like trying to set a debt high score. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I assume you win something. Yeah. 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 For sure. Yeah, you. Uh, so I, so I, I knew it was bad, and I would cry all the time about it. And then something would happen where I would like, you know, drain the canoe with a thimble, and then I would go about my life. Um, and so I just had such, I just was so ashamed of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and so then I wrote that article, Get Rich or Die yes. Vlogging, because we had gotten a brand deal for the channel, which was like, I was like so happy because it was going to pay my rent. But then we got all these comments being like, okay, rich girls, like get your YouTube money, you millionaires. Mm -hmm. And I was like, 
I'm I'm literally looking for quarters in my car and crying as these comments are coming in. Like you could not make a better biopic. <laughs> like it was yeah. like you can, you absolutely can. Um, I know it's like, have you seen Ray? Come yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> um, so how many songs have you, you written? Zero. American um, classics. <laughs> so I, so like I just was like, if this is something that's bothering me, it's yeah. got to be bothering other people, mm -hmm. or it's got to be a secret that other people have. And then I had some opportunity to do a pot. I don't know my podcast producer. Here, <laughs> what happened? You guys came to me first, or something? Yeah, you guys wanted to do a project with me. I'm very popular, and <laughs> I and I was like, let's do a show about money, and then and then because it was like, let's just rip this wound wide open. Mm -hmm. Why not? I it's like a really weird instinct to be like, I'm having this problem. I should tell everyone about mm -hmm. it. Um, and so that's like how the first season started, where I just was like, there's g there's something here because people might like, what are my friends doing for money? Yeah. How are how is anybody making any money? Yep. What is money? What is Where money? does it come from? <laughs> <laughs> Why is it here? Mm -hmm. and, and like, how did it feel to kind of like dive deep into like probe the wound that way? Um, I can't really listen back to the early episodes because mm -hmm. I can't believe what I said. And what I like, I, I interviewed family members and I talked to my student loan provider on air and I talked to the bank on air. And uh, I, I'm like, I, I can't. But like what I was reading back the book to do the audio book. I was like, oh, my God, this girl's really saying stuff. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, no, that's me. Yeah. I said that. She is making it messy. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I was like, who's this messy, messy bitch who lives for drama? It's me. <laughs> um, so so then. So, yeah. So it's like I, I think it was better to just go into that stuff, not thinking about it. Yeah. And then and then people would be like, wow, that was so brave what you said. And I was like, I, what did I say? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I, so that was like helpful. A real motif that we've uncovered so far is blacking out yeah. <laughs> <laughs> during your creative process. Um, but it kind is, of. the book is so the book is so personal as well. There's Thanks. so much. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Is it? I hope so. <laughs> I hope it is. <laughs> it's so personal, and the stories are so um, so illustrative, and and I think it's it's really honest in a way like a lot of people uh, are afraid to be. And like, why was it? What was important to you about telling your own story as part of this? Like, um, oh sure. Discovery. Well, so um, I think a lot of personal finance books come from. A place of aspirational versus relatable and what I wanted was to be asked I mean to be relatable not aspirational I don't think I've said this but uh, it remind it, a lot of the finance guru stuff that I read reminded me of that 30 rock bit where Tracy tries to do stand-up mm -hmm. but he can't relate to the people yeah, yeah, anymore yeah. so he's like you guys ever had a bad lobster and then <laughs> the audience is like we can't talk to you mm -hmm. uh, and so that's kind of how it feels like, yeah so then I I like that I'm coming from, I, you know, I get people asking me questions about specific things. And it's like a lot of times I can just go, that sucks, dude. Yeah. Like, I don't have an answer. Like, uh, the politics should be better. Like, you know? Yeah. And I and I think a lot of times finance gurus try to be like, no, here's the answer. Here's the one answer. Mm -hmm. And I was like, also, I can't come at you like I'm this perfect person. I feel like the advice is more palatable from someone you also know is a is a Am I allowed to, is a fuck up? You know what I mean? I, st I started swearing. Nobody's walked out. We've sworn okay. a bunch so okay, far. Okay, good, good, yeah. good. Um, by, um, by a gentle raise of hand, whose constitution is offended by curse words? Don't do, don't put, so are you kidding me? I'm just kidding. That's, I'm just joking. And then they're like, I'm a narc. And then we kick yeah, them out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's like, nerd, fuck off. Yeah. yeah, what would the end game be there? Suck a pile of fuck. <laughs> 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 This is a book about money. This is the real shit. <laughs> <My God. laughs> mic it's like 10 minutes into the event. We yeah, dropped the mic to walk away. <laughs> you know, we Chris, if Chris Rock dropped his mic earlier in the special, he yeah, wouldn't right? have to be up there for as long. I know. We were talking about the Q&A, and he was like, so when do you want to do the Q&A? And then we were like, no, what's cool is to just go, no further questions. <laughs> Throw the mic down. I said you should have done it before I started asking questions. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's a boss move. Um. Okay, so finance gurus. I, there, there is a lot. There's a bunch in the book about finance gurus. What do you think they like? What like? Cause and, and they're bad advice, right? Like generally. Mm -hmm. uh, do you, okay. Do you consider yourself a guru? No. Okay. 
Just it's very weird. Like, I, it's almost a disconnect where I get invited to do things and they're like, finance expert. And I'm like, did you read the book? <laughs> like, <laughs> no. Like, that, I mean, there's tips in there. Obviously, it's like useful stuff, but it's stuff that I like spent a year digging around and finding. Yeah. But, but so I kind of just did the research. So you'll be like, I don't know, a year ahead of the old you after reading it. Congrats, you've earned a year. But like, it's just very... Um, strange because I'm coming at it as being bad with money yeah. and then they'll be like so this guru is going to teach us how to do the and I'm like <laughs> oh I won't certainly won't <laughs> like I think there I think it's just like any young person who's even talking about money people are like give us the answers you know yeah. what I mean yes there, I don't I don't I also don't think and I think like a lot of this stuff is entertainment value based and like they're very confident guessers and a lot of the people that get a lot of attention are just very entertaining to watch they're sure. not necessarily the most educated people yeah it's like you know how like in la maybe you don't know you do you have emmys you know how like i i owe her so much money <laughs> i promised her five thousand dollars every time she said that and now i have no money <laughs> <laughs> i uh like the, you would think that the movie stars would be the people that have all the money in the big houses, sure. but it's actually like the producers that you've never heard oh, of. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think the people that are fronting to be like, I'm a finance guru are actually like, it's the people who are real quiet are the ones that have all the money. Yeah, totally. Right. Like, it, you know who you should read a book about finance? It's just like the um, the Koch brothers yeah, <laughs> or whatever. No. And it's like, inherit your father's oil yeah, empire. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Step one, my favorite is when Mitt Romney, they like did some town hall with Mitt Romney and they were like, so how do you, how do you like get off the ground as an entrepreneur or whatever? And he was just like, well, you ask your, he's like, sincerely, he was like, ask your parents for $10,000 to start a business. And everyone was like, oh no, you're a robot. <laughs> <laughs> but now like, wouldn't it be cool to have him? Oh, it's so sad. Anyway, <laughs> what's happened to us? Everything would be marginally better. <laughs> Um, okay, great. Um, so what, so yeah, backtracking just a little. You're fine. You're allowed. I know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what, what made you, what appealed to you? You did a year worth of research. That's hard. Mm -hmm. Nobody likes that. No, I didn't. I uh, certainly didn't. Yeah. And you, you dug in, you had a podcast going. It's a good thing. What made you want to write it as a book? And what do you feel like you, uh, added to the process and added to this work, the bad with money, like canon that, mm -hmm. that you can do in a book and not a podcast. I mean, it's, in, it's fun to see it on the shelves next to these other books. Mm -hmm. Like I went to the Barnes and Noble in Glendale and looked at, um, the, the book on the shelf yeah. and it's under, I don't know what, or, where I thought it would be, but it's under like money management. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's hilarious. Um, but it is, it has like, you know, it, like, advice and ways to like get your life together in it but I just was so surprised because it's next to all of these books that I I don't think address the things that my book does so I wanted to do a book that seemed grounded in reality right <laughs> like not just like if you need a second boat mortgage kind of that's like what it's next to yeah do boats have mortgages I don't know okay. <laughs> I don't own a home and I <laughs> refuse to go on boats can't get I me to look to at a whale. <laughs> I wanted to stay on a boat when I was home in Florida. My sister said no. You wanted to like stay in a, a botel? Yeah, no, it was a botel. I think that's, I don't think I made that up. <laughs> okay. I'm good. I'm not botel good. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I were, I were, I would be a billionaire. That's boat millionaire. <laughs> that's just for you. <laughs> that's that really I said that. <laughs> one for one person in the audience. Um, but yeah, so I just wanted to be able to contribute to this like, you know, I think I could write more personal stories yeah. in the book versus like what I tell on the podcast. I think like I, I so the the book is I mean, no one here is shocked. It's like very social justice mm -hmm. based. Like I don't think you can talk about these types of you know, I, I have a chapter about credit cards, but it like it, it begins in this way that I don't know that any other credit card book chapter begins which is just like well first we're going to talk about redlining mm -hmm. <laughs> and like and like first we're going to talk about like the ways that uh, loans and banks discriminate against people yeah. of color like I think that the, there's this context missing where they assume that everybody's coming from the same place or they're coming from the same like ability to whatever and it's just this American thing of like pull yourself up by your bootstraps yeah. if I can do it you can do it totally and it's like dude you're not me like you don't know <laughs> What was the, uh, was there like a light bulb moment uh, that, because the book is like incredibly thoughtful and inclusive 
of Thanks. you're welcome. I, I was really struck by it, and like it was really um, like heartfelt and and it felt it felt useful and it's especially inclusive of people um with mental illness and uh queer people and people of color mm -hmm. and like was there like a flashbulb moment that was like oh i i need this book to include it or is it just like how uh you as a uh as a queer woman who i'm writes what uh, sorry <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Sorry, I, as a as a really nice, big, strong dude, <laughs> uh, big, strong. You can be queer and big, strong. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's not. A, a I'm not post. though. Yeah, I oh, have yeah, little yeah, yeah. arms. Right. So I understood little, your joke. I've got little arms too. Um, <laughs> I'm a medium. Your uh, medium arms. Yeah. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, but yeah. Was was there kind of a flashbulb moment, or was it just stuff that you in your life have been like, "This is what affects me," and I don't feel addressed. Yeah, I don't feel. Ad I did not feel addressed. One, uh, I felt very alienated mm -hmm. from all the other stuff, and two, like it's there's just realities that like don't. I don't know. Everything I read f sounded so straight. It was all so straight. It was like, and then your your husband will do this, and then you'll do this, and and you know what? I and it was and like that's not the reality of like my daily life, and like my I don't I you're like the first straight man I've talked to in years. <laughs> uh, like I just don't know. I, I'm I don't know what you guys are up to. I don't know what you're doing. It's not. We're good. still rewatching Breaking Bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know it's not good. I heard whispers. It's not good. So Some like, of us cried at Springsteen on Broadway. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real breakthrough. <laughs> That's nice. Good for you guys crying in public. Yeah. Well, it was dark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so I just didn't feel uh, spoken to, and and like, and also I was just so alarmed by like I felt like there was so much more transparency in the queer community. Like I would hear stories where this girl would be like, I have a secret credit card from my boyfriend. Or like, they would be like, yeah, we don't tell each other our salaries. And I'd be like, what do you guys talk about? Mm -hmm. Which I often wonder about straight people. What do you guys talk about? <laughs> but so- Try to I get my wife to watch Breaking Bad. <laughs> 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 she asked me if I'm crying during Bruce Springsteen on Broadway. <laughs> but I, but On also Netflix, I'm not a millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> but like, so I just didn't, so I, yeah, I just didn't feel spoken to. And especially like in the chapter about, um, about having children, yeah. you know, my girlfriend and I are both cisgender women. So that's going to be a, an expense in mm -hmm. a way that, um, it might not be for other people. Uh, and also there was a, a really big moment where, um, I was out to drinks with my friend Carrie Wade, who was in, a, in an episode of the show, uh, about disability and she has CP and she was saying that we were just talking casually about mm -hmm. money and she was like, oh, you know that disabled people aren't allowed to save more than $2,000 before their benefits are cut. And I like almost knocked my beer off the table just to be like, what? And she was like, yeah, we're like not legally allowed to save more than that before they start cutting your benefits. Jeez. And I was like, oh man, that, that was like, I, I think she ended up being like episode three of the show because yeah. I was just like, this is bananas. Like the, it made me, that was like a big light bulb where I was like, oh, this is, this isn't just a thing you can just do on your own. This is a thing that like is way is like inequality is like way part of it baked yeah, in for sure. Mm -hmm. And so like, let, let's talk about this now. Um, what, what are some, because you do, I think the the book walks are really um, deft line between talking about individual kind of things you can do to make your own life better mm -hmm. and, and more uh fiscally sound but and and then it's a lot about the the structural and systemic problems that make it that are like working against individuals especially individuals in the communities we've been mentioning mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh at all times so like what are first of all the big picture things that that you would like to see change like what are some of the like big systemic government things that you're like this would make a real difference in people's lives after a year of reading and research sure Free pizza for no, just kidding. I'm like running for student government. <laughs> yeah. um, no, uh, uh, medical debt is the big one. I think that is one that there's a chapter about it. Mm -hmm. And I mean, ha I mean, everyone here probably gets medical GoFundMes from friends or family members or whatever all the time. And that is truly dystopian. Yeah. I can't, I, I think about it all the time. And I, and I, and like, there's like a reality. I mean, there's a reality show now for like pay back your student loans. The, oh, the yeah, pay yeah. back your student loans. The, like, um, what's it called? Pay, Michael pay back show. or something. Yeah. I, it's just, and I, like, I don't, 
I don't, I think that's a great idea, but I also am like, oh my God, like, how did we get here? Yeah. Um, but I think we don't, I think especially for young people, like top down policy, we focus a lot on student loans and healthcare is a huge millennial and Gen Z crisis. Mm -hmm. Um, and we just don't view it that way, but it, but it really is. There's a website called RIP medical debt, which you can go on and you can donate to like erase someone's medical debt essentially. Yeah. Um, because it's just out of control. Uh, and, and so, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of things. Like I think uh, people don't think that millennials are, or Gen Z and millennials are, are statistically more likely to be in retail or service industry jobs, but they see us as, I don't know, the depiction of us is like at our startup taking selfies while eating avocado toast or whatever we're doing. So, um, but majority of us are not doing, are you a millennial? Yeah. I think I'm a millennial. I don't, I know I don't look, I look like a millennial's uncle. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I look like, yeah, yeah. but I'm a, I technically a millennial. Yeah. So I think that we just don't view these things as millennial I problems. Forgot like, how old I, <laughs> I went to say how old I was. I was like, I'm nope. Don't even remember. There's, um, y- you're immortal. Anyway. So there's, there's, uh, like, you know, so we don't view, but then we see people protesting for the minimum wage yeah. to be risen. And we don't see that as a millennial issue. And right. it is because most of us are in the service industry. So there's just like a bunch of things that I think we, we view as, poor people problems yeah. rather than like people our age problems. Right. It's it's an intersectionality thing, yes. right? Like not like no, people not considering age and income and then also gender yes. and, yeah and race. Yeah. And, on top of yeah. everything. I mean, this is this I was doing research we talk I talk about this in the book, but I was doing like research and about like, you know, what what are cuz I was so tired of hearing about just like, oh, entitlement and student loans whatever, which like obviously I have student loans. Uh, and like, so I am in that boat as well, but I was like, what, what are the other things that we might not think about that are millennial issues? And the two people I speak to in the book about medical debt are both millennials. And then, um, and then, uh, I was, t- I was re- I was looking at police brutality and a lot of the young black people killed by police are squarely millennials. Mm-hmm. They're in the millennial bracket. So why don't we talk about that as a millennial issue? Right. As opposed to like my, my blog is also an Uber driver. <laughs> <laughs> That's are like, you? Oh, sorry. Are you somebody's uncle? <laughs> <laughs> I am. I'm somebody's uncle. Oh, yeah, you are. Yeah. Oh, anyway, so. You're, you're also somebody's aunt. <laughs> shut the <laughs> up. Shut up. I'm 21. <laughs> you can be an shut aunt at 21. Shut the fuck up, Stop erasing millennial aunts. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I just think that they're, like, from top-down policy, we don't, we, we, very or we're very narrow about it and we don't like and if we Nona Aronowitz is a great person who you should read her writing on poverty and millennials because we don't view these like it has it, we these issues get ignored because we protest and march and do all these things for for one aspect of it and we don't think about like lower income people because we are generally like the the middle upper class middle upper class people are the ones who have the time to do the activism yeah so we should be thinking about it more all encompassing. That's great. Um, Thanks. Yeah, no problem. Uh, happy, happy to say what's true that your book is very good and thoughtful, Thank and you're you. thoughtful talking about it. Um, the, I, I think. Okay, so we've covered. I think the structure of the book and the content are. It's really rich and it's really varied in terms. Of like we've covered. There's a lot of personal stories. There's a lot of kind of like raising of social justice issues. But there are also like there's a lot of like really interesting and and sound advice that's not that's not like get rich advice but it's like i would call it like make things as easy on your life as you can advice anti-stress yeah Yeah. anti-stress like um don't and don't add extra stress where there's already so much stress in the world right yeah um so like you you write a lot especially early in the book you talk about like negative scripts right or Mm -hmm. like bad uh, troubling uh, troublesome scripts that people have in their head like ideas or principles or how they've come to understand money as like a paradigm yeah like can you talk a little bit about like what some of those like negative like those kind of pernicious ideas and false ideas that people have well, people people think that if you've made money, if someone has made money, they must have worked really hard mm-hmm. <laughs> and earned it. Uh, and and then that also, it's called the prosperity gospel. It's this thing where they think that because they that a person has money, they're a, a good, better person. Uh, and usually in my slideshow about this, I just put up a photo of Trump. <laughs> 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 um, but like it, it's, 
that idea or it's and it's this idea that like I'm in poverty because I am a bad person with moral, mental and intellectual and emotional failings. Yeah. And that's like not the case at all. And and I think we ascribe self-worth to it. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, productivity culture doesn't help. Right. Like if you have a job and it's maybe a nine to five, which no one really has, but maybe you do. And then you see the hours of like five to midnight to be like, oh, these are my working hours to do my other thing. Yeah. And and so nobody has I mean, I don't even know what the weekend is mm -hmm. other than I guess a terrible singer. But wow. Whoa. Oh, <laughs> Career over. Yeah. Um, the weekend carries a lot of water in the publishing community. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, he's a finance guru. Buy cocaine. <laughs> that's what he says. Anyway. I, I'll tell you, it's worked for him. <laughs> yeah, right? Um, but, but don't. But anyway, so, um, so yeah, I think that there's like a lot of, um, there's a lot of stuff that we like ascribe self-worth yeah. to it. And, and that has nothing to, to do with how much money you have. That's one of them. I could go into more, but I think we got no, the light, right? Yeah, we're so we're at we're at thirty minutes. Well, so we'll talk for a little bit, and then we'll take some questions. Oh, okay. Yeah, if that's okay. Yeah. Un unless you're sick of my questions. No. Okay. I would love. I love to talk to you. Likewise. Thanks. That's why we're friends. Thanks. <laughs> um, the okay. So just a couple more, and then we'll we'll open it to to these fine people. Mm -hmm. Um. So what is an example? Because uh, again, so much of the writing in the book is your own evolution the evolution of your own understanding of money and personal finance it's like what is a healthier script that you've recently adopted over the course of this podcast sure. and uh and book well I, I think there's um allison always says there's the thing and then there's how you feel about the thing mm -hmm. so the thing is money and it exists and it's in your life and capitalism is whatever and it's just happening and then um and then there's how you feel about it and you can't change the thing. You can only change how you feel about it. So in the beginning of the book, I talk a lot about, like, just get rid of, like, shame and embarrassment and, and, and anxiety and stigma, which is, I mean, not an easy task at all, for sure. But it's like you, you can only just, like, I would go to pay the bill, right? And I'd be like, I'd be like, oh, I'm paying this bill and I want to vomit and, like, all this stuff. And now I'm just like, nope, just, si just sign it. You know what I mean? Put it in the mail. You're not upset. Like you have to kind of take the weight off. And a lot of the ways to do that is to to go back into like what you were taught about money. So the scripts thing is like what your family taught you about money, what your your family of origin taught you about money. Do you buy stuff when you're sad because that's what your mom did for you? Mm -hmm. Do you um, save really frugally because that your dad was like really intense about that? And so it made you really paranoid. There's there's ways to like I saw a friend of mine wrote down like a list of of things that she was had learned from her parents that she like hadn't even really thought about because she was just a kid but yeah. she and so like and she was like okay how do i start to untangle these these things that i believe because they don't serve you or they're not true great yeah wonderful um okay let me briefly i i we've gone i haven't even looked at my list of questions yet i um, love that you brought a little notebook i brought a little notebook well i, wa I wanted to do a good job um, you're doing so you're doing amazing sweetie. thanks buddy <laughs> <laughs> um okay so let's do let's do two more quick sure. questions if you could change if you could go back in time uh if you could turn back time as Cher would say the the uh kind of theoretical physicist Cher. sure sure, sure. i've <laughs> um, heard of her if you could turn back time as is her grand life's work uh-huh um this is questions gonna take the whole rest of the no, time i love it um what what is one thing that you would do differently financially like throw if you could like whisper something into your ear at any point in your life and and take it make it stick what would it be i wouldn't have listened okay what you knew you, me yeah would i have listened no no i'm surprised you're listening to me now <laughs> <laughs> josh and i dated for a long time <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's he's one of my favorite things is how well you know me so how mean you can be i know it's a lot of fun it's great I, when you know someone really well like a real beauty is that you can just be mean in a way that you know they're gonna think about later uh, <laughs> it's amazing i lo i really when you get a when you burn me real good i love it it's a lot of fun anyway um, so uh, but what would you have tried what would you have tried to tell you i mean i probably i probably would have said to start saving money mm -hmm. but i i just didn't even know how to 
do that. I think you know what it was? I think it was like, I think I would be like, you don't have to try to have this lifestyle that isn't true. Like I would post so much stuff on Facebook. Wow, I'm dating myself. I would post so much stuff on Facebook that was like <laughs> about my about my like accomplishments, mm -hmm. but I never shared with anyone, even friends. I never really shared. I mean, I was devastated 100% of the time. I never, yeah. I like, <laughs> yeah, thanks. I, it wasn't 100% of the time. It was, well, I, was, I was so competitive and I was so, yes. I was so convinced that like if I wasn't successful by 24, I should jump off a bridge. Mm -hmm. Like I was so intense about it. And, and you still have three years. <laughs> I'm at you now. I know. God fucking damn it. I'm very good. You're Again, good. Not Botel good, but, but very good. good. And so like I really I I really like I think I I thought that I had to appear a certain way and look perfect. Mm -hmm. And I could have done I could have done well with asking my friends what was up with them yeah. and finding out where people were making. It took me so long to realize people's parents gave them money. And I'm don't shame anyone. If your parents are offering you money, take all their money. I'll take but your parents' money. They don't, you know they don't have it. Yeah. But I'm just saying. Not your parents. I mean anyone's oh, parents. Oh, anyone's yeah. parents. Yeah. I just mean like I it didn't occur to me. So I would be like, why am I a failure? And then I literally when I moved to L.A. when I was 25 was when I was like, wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> um. But it, I never even, so like I judged myself so harshly yeah. based on other people's success. Like how many friends of ours, like, sorry to whatever, but how many friends of ours like did stuff that I was so jealous of and then it didn't matter at all? Yeah, totally. I mean, And I, I would I, cry all the time about it. Yeah, oh, it's very stressful. And mm -hmm. I think it's, especially when you're talking about, as you mentioned earlier, that script of like people who are making money or are, are better than doing, me. Yeah. Yes. And if, and if you are failing to do that, it is, it is not it is a moral failure and a failure of the fiber of your being. Yeah, it was, why am I not talented? Yeah. And it was literally just because I, I didn't know that they had a second income stream or yeah. whatever. Um, and so I think I would, I think I would just like in my ear be like, where's the fire? You know yeah. what I mean? Like I was so, such in a rush and like mm -hmm. so convinced that if I didn't have X amount of money by this time, I was like not even worth anything as a person. Mm -hmm. Whereas like, no, you're like a good friend. And like a good yeah. and like a good daughter and mm -hmm. like a you know what I mean? Yeah. There's other metrics. So to stop deriving so much of your personal value mm -hmm. from from that. Mm -hmm. That's a wonderful answer. Thank you. You're welcome. And uh, okay, last question: Who who do you have in mind when you when you're writing this book? Who are you like? I hope the book makes it into this person's hands. Um, like a a younger person who okay twofold younger person who will read it before they've developed all these shame like all this shame and yeah. negativity and realize that they don't need to feel that way and also an older person who can go oh this is what they're up against and what they're about mm -hmm. probably i shouldn't leave weird comments on their stuff calling them lazy and entitled yeah maybe i'll think before i do that yep did you, when you were in Midtown today doing press, did you just hurl one through the window of Tucker Carlson's studio? <laughs> <laughs> I felt so weird at Wall Street. Oh, yeah. Really sure. weird. Someone had a, I like well, almost lost my mind. This is me being, this is classic me. Someone had a, a sticker that said Trump 2016, and I was like, I'm going to go over there and fucking say something, blah, blah, blah. And then my publicist was like, it, he wrote, it says dump Trump. Uh, and I was like, oh, just got so I was like up. about to throw a Molotov cocktail. And then it was like, oh, no, they, they were they you were wrong. I mean, truly, <laughs> though, you think you're bad with money and you wrote a book about it. But how many global financial collapses have you triggered? Zero. <laughs> yeah. So you're ahead of the game. You're pretty decent with money by that standard. If you read some of these art, there's articles about like 24 year olds who like start working at at big banks or companies and they like press one wrong button and lose them money i could read those stories all day but there's a lot of them yeah more than you would be comfortable Ooh, with very bad well those are those are all the questions that i have time to ask you one more round of applause right now for gabby dunn and her wonderful book and um so we're gonna open up to questions we'll have somebody coming around with a, a mic so if you have a question um put your hand in the air and ariel and, will pick and ariel will pick and we'll, we'll ariel's the best yeah Oh, sorry. I, I pointed. Sorry. You You're not choosing. No. Okay. I said sorry. Hey. Uh, am I loud enough for y'all to hear me about this? Yeah. Okay. I was told I have to speak with this. Uh, thank you both for being here and Thanks. for speaking. And this is actually a question for both of y'all. Given that this book is called Bad With Money mm -hmm. and you talk about your experiences with money, do you still consider yourself bad with money? Mm -hmm. Like, 
again, this is for both for both of y'all. And also what metric is bad, as Josh just said, mm-hmm. you haven't caused any global fighting <laughs> collapses. But you guys know and that. <laughs> and yeah. He's, and he's not a billionaire. Yeah. But, like, what are we considering bad then? And by that stance, it's like, yeah. how bad are both of y'all? Well, I think I think bad just means you're not thinking about it. Like, I, I was burying my head in the sand. So, like, I never looked at my bank statements. I never looked at my, I threw my mail away. Uh, because I don't need that negativity in my life. Uh, <laughs> I I would just like, you know, I, I never cared or looked at anything. So that's the only, if you're like not actively doing, you know, thinking about it and doing something and like doing any even small thing, even just look, literally just open your mail. Like then that's not great. Because I couldn't continue to live not knowing anything. Um, and and uh, and I, it's not really my fault because I had no financial literacy and and you know my parents so like it was just like <laughs> lovely people they're great they're great but you know like I, they're big spenders so it's um so it's kind of this thing of like you know bad just means like not aware basically sure. but I am I am also still bad with money yeah I get into situations all the time. <laughs> I get into situations all the time. That's like a lazy like DVR description of an episode of a sitcom. Like, uh, Gabby the, gets the, into a situation yeah. again. It's like, oh, I love the Big Bang Theory. <laughs> <laughs> so many situations to this comedy. I, I, what did I, what do I do? I, I still sort of spend as if the money has already come in when it hasn't. Mm-hmm. Like if I know I'm getting paid for something, I go, oh, well, this will take care of itself. Yeah. But then the place will be like, we, we're we actually going to, we don't want to pay you. And I go, no. Oh, no, that's bad. And then I'm like, but I already spent the money. <laughs> <laughs> how how often does that work as a persuasive tactic? Oh, me whining? Yeah. I have people who do that. <laughs> Ooh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> people yeah um, you buy a lot of sneakers you i do love buy sneakers. a lot of sneakers i i do love sneakers i'm a, i'm i would say i'm not great with money mm-hmm. but i'm uh i figured out it took me a long time and i was very fortunate and i i made enough money that i right now have enough money yeah <laughs> and, that's what and, i mean yeah oh, i i spent i got some money and then i like me and my comedy partner m- made the same amount of money on something and then i was like oh that's amazing we're the same and then i was like no it's not i'm paying back like 10 years of mistakes just car payments Mm -hmm. and and like credit card debt Mm -hmm. and student loans and all this stuff i was like i'm literally breaking even because i'm just cleaning up a big dust storm behind me but that's great that's that's lucky i mean that's like i just lucked out Mm -hmm. i i feel like and now i have zero no i don't i still have student loans you're (laughs) Oh, you were just, you were doing that thing again where you brag about your successes to make people think you're right. successful. Oh you're my like, God. I, you're like, I have zero money. <laughs> and people yeah. are like, ooh, okay. <laughs> I meant zero <laughs> debt, but I wasn't, I was lying. Um, but thank you. That's a, that's a great question. Yeah. Uh, other questions? <laughs> uh, should I stand? You don't have to. Whatever makes you most comfortable. Sure. I'm not going to stand. Don't. <laughs> I applaud your decision. Thank you. Um, um, my parents are immigrants. I live in Queens, so lots of people I know, their parents are immigrants. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've noticed, like, talking to other people who come from families of immigrants, that uh, no matter, like, what culture we're from, we share a lot of, like, similarities. Like, our grandmas both, like, wash Ziploc bags and reuse them. Sure. <laughs> and oh, um, yeah. I was wondering if there are any other communities where you've noticed, like, strands of similarity, even though... Like, mm-hmm. there's two sets of people that might not be super similar, like, on the outside. Yeah, I mean, there's stuff in the book uh, definitely about um, a lot, uh, a couple people that I interviewed are, like, first generation, you know, first first in their family to go to college. So their parents are very intent on them going to college, um, even though it might not be financially feasible. Um, and so there was also a, a really weird, sti- I mean, interesting statistic where it was, like, uh, that because because generally like black applicants to jobs have to have more qualifications than white applicants because of racism uh black families are more likely to try to push their kid to go to a school that they can't afford and so that they're most likely to be paying back 
their own, their child's loans to their own detriment. Uh, my obviously a lot of people's families do that, but I was like, God, that's so many levels of systemic bullshit that leads to this one thing. Like I, I was like, was the worst like that thing of just trying to solve a crime ever? Like just a red string to red string to a. Pfft. Um, yeah, but in the book I talk a lot about um uh, first generation families and like uh, you know how you. Th there's different circumstances where like you might have multiple of them told me that you know their families came with them to college or they went somewhere close by so that they could continue to like help out in the household in a way that I think like my friends in in my like Jewish day school were like fuck off mom and dad you know there's like more of a family obligation like this girl moved her family with her to Chicago so she could they could go to college she could go to college and she could also continue to help in the household so I found that super interesting um and like you know that's one of the ways in which I think like we don't consider the differences in people's lives you might say college student but you mean completely you know all three of those types that I mentioned are completely different types of college students so it's, it doesn't really help anyone to just be like college students are like this because I talked to a really wide-ranging group of people who are in college having like very different experiences so I hope that you like that part of the book <laughs> great question oh. hey Hi. Um, so one of the things I really like about your sort of body of work here talking about money is that you sort of mix personal solutions with how to tackle the systemic problems that Thanks. are causing a lot of these. How far into the like journey through finance were you when you discovered like, oh, this is a systemic thing. I need to like maybe zoom out and mm -hmm. take on the whole thing. Um, well, I always say season one was finances and feelings. And then season two, we were like getting there. And then by season three, I was like, I think we have to burn down the banks. Like I started. <laughs> If you start listening to the show, it's wow, what a character arc. Um, uh, Season four is the one on the docks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These, they're so young. Has anyone seen The Wire? It's fine. Um, uh, no, it's like American Horror Story. Like season two is Coven. Oh, Season yeah, three yeah. is, right. Um, so That's the only one I could name. Oh, Coven. Murder House. That's the name of one? <laughs> yeah, I knew you would like no. that. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guys, somebody check that for me. It's, it's called it's Murder first. House? Yeah. The first season, that's why they were working on the name kinks. So. <laughs> uh, I thought you would love that. I, I did that just it. for you. I um, love it. Thank you. Um, no, so my producers are here in the front row. I keep pointing to them. But, like, the show is theirs as much as it is mine. And they um, kind of were also pushing to, like, get more, less narrow with it and to start tackling, like, bigger topics. And also, season two was happening right around the election. So it was really hard it's a worst. Oh my God. I did an episode with Stephanie Beatrice where we talk about immigration and that, and it came out on election day. So we recorded the intro for it the night before. And I was like, well, I, it'll, when this comes out, Hillary Clinton will be president. <laughs> like it's a rough one to listen to guys. Uh, and then, uh, nope. So I've never listened to that Wait, one. Wait, what? Back. Yeah, I know. <laughs> did something happen? <laughs> <laughs> We're in the darkest timeline. No, so I never listened back to it. Because, but so it was hard not to to start seeing things in that way. Like one of my favorite episodes is with Jane Mayer, where she talks about um her book Dark Money, which is about so good. politics and money. If it's you buy two bucks tonight, yeah, Dark Money is the scariest book I've ever read. So I read it. Did I tell you this? What I read it on my honeymoon. Uh, Why would you ever? Because I still got it. And <laughs> what is uh, wrong with and you? And I had violent nightmares every night. It took me three days to read, and every night I had nightmares about getting stabbed to death that is why did you do pick up a like a i'll tell the boys i love before or something for your honeymoon i mean i'm not trying to say goodbye to all those boys <laughs> on my honeymoon. Um, <laughs> no but um I, it's I, hard not to get political i, with I it. also like um i just didn't that i had time to read a long book was the real answer okay. and i was like this will be good and then i was like oh fuck everything yeah. <laughs> Convulsing. Let me read it on my honeymoon. Yeah. What is wrong with you? Anyway, so yeah, so the the uh, her Jane Mayer's book, and then Helene Olin did a really great book called Pound Foolish, which is about exposing the dark side of the personal finance industry. So there are people that are like doing stuff like that. But so I was reading stuff like that, and it was hard for me to swallow these like tips and tricks and like don't get your latte and blah 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 when I was like you know having violent nightmares about being stabbed yeah. because of Jane Mayer's <laughs> book. So pick up. 
my book and those books. Yeah, but first, this book first. Yeah, and, and then, then if yeah. you if you want to, I mean, it was scarier than reading. I Carrie before that was the scariest book I had ever read, and now I think the scariest book I've ever read is Dark Money. It truly is scarier because it's, it's like, real. Yes, that's exactly it. It's right. like when you if you read like it, you're like, there's no clown that lives in the sewer. I mean, may, it's New York. Maybe there's a Maybe clown there that lives in the, sewer. in the sewer. He's like probably pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, oh, sewer clown. He's like taking pictures in Times Square and shit. He's upset because it's been bad representation of sewer clowns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, people hate me because of this book. Yeah. I just want to tickle a kid. Yeah. (laughs) You know what? That sounds bad, too. All right. Maybe I'm not doing my best PR. Yeah. Sewer sewer clown. Do Do you know Kitar Bear from Boston? No. Ah, forget it. I'll talk about it. We'll talk about it later. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Do you have other questions? I see you in the front too, though. No, back behind the socks, behind the novelty socks. <laughs> behind what, the novelty. What a lovely, trusting audience <laughs> that ground that crowd served the mic <laughs> and wasn't just like, I've got a couple of things to say. <laughs> um, What's up? So my mom is also an immigrant, and um, I have no idea how like book stuff works, mm-hmm. but. It, do you think and this would ever be like translated into a different language? Like, because I think she would really benefit, but she is not going to read English. Yeah, so. for sure. Uh, they do sell the rights to other countries. It's terrible because I have people who are like, I'm in this country. Can I get your book? And I'm like, for an exorbitant amount of shipping costs. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's up to like the publisher sells it to somewhere else. And it's very random. Like with me and Allison's first book, it was like Israel, Switzerland, Germany, and like somewhere else and i was like uh okay what yeah I, <laughs> why do those places want it i have i have a bunch of copies of my the book i co-wrote a few years ago that are in chinese yes and, i uh, have i have yeah. ones like that too they also didn't want that book in china <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like very weird and random how it works i would think where is she from yeah right i would think spanish would be yeah, on I the bet list i bet it'll hopefully yeah I, is there anything is there someone they can like write to like a congressman or like, like stick stickly <laughs> no 15 yeah, right, 15 this, broadway I'm, stick stickly wow like, i've really dated just, myself <laughs> like what a worldly 21 year old you are <laughs> um no i just mean like is it a, a thing that you could i like, think if you if tweet you know at the, the publisher, publisher yeah, yeah that it might it that, that's that kind of stuff if there's a ground tweet save continue. everything brooklyn 99 anyway <laughs> yeah. six seasons in a movie right what's up What's that? Create the groundswell. Okay, yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm glad that you weren't like, don't tell them don't to do this. Don't tell them to do that. <laughs> well, what do we do? Oh, Atria feedback. A T R I A feedback at Simon and Schuster. Great. Cool. Oh, that's terrific. So yeah, I, and I'm that that kind of stuff like makes a difference if enough people want something. Definitely. It is, it is in a and I would love for it to be. Interest. I would love for it to be translated to Spanish. Yeah, especially. that'd be really cool. Yeah, Everyone right. Everyone email. Take out your phones. Ooh, what look, if I was that guy? Look, take look out your, your chair. phones. Now take your hand out. It's probably got your phone in it already. <laughs> um, <laughs> two more questions. Yeah. Okay. Here you go. Hey. Hello. Hi. Uh, I'm 16 and. Uh, Oh my gosh, I, I swore so much. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you've heard it before, but not for me. <laughs> Sorry, what, once I just, what, uh, I was on a podcast and an 18 year old called in for advice and was like, I don't know, I like this boy and he doesn't like me. And I was like, you're beautiful. I couldn't even see her. I was like, you're never going to look better than you do right now. Who cares about that guy? You're gorgeous. Like I started screaming. Anyway, go on. <laughs> Anyway, we can see you, and you are and also you're very lovely. also gorgeous, and who cares about <laughs> we're anyone? We're like, we can see you, and yikes. No. <laughs> <laughs> What's your question? Uh, since I'm, like, in high school, and, like, all this college stuff is real scary, and, mm-hmm. like, debt and things, and since I really like art and drawing and web comics and things like that, I really want to go into an art career, and what do you think, like, what do you have advice for freelancing? Because it's real, like... I did a little research and it looks real scary. About yeah. Asking for money and things like that and knowing your worth. A and large like chunk. Yeah. A large chunk of the book is about preparing for college and, and high school and all of my regrets there. Financial regrets, yeah. not just like prom regrets. <laughs> um, and and so like prom there's regrets, a large. My favorite cologne. <laughs> fuck off. 
So yeah, there is there is like a large section of the book that is about that. I've been told that it's a really great book for people in high school or that from friends of mine who are out of uh, out of college who have said, oh, they wish that they had read it earlier in their lives. Um, so there is a lot of stuff about like trying to stay out of debt there. I think there's like a huge movement toward community colleges, which I actually really love. Dr. Dr. Jill Biden um, talks a lot, teaches at a community college and talks a lot about the benefits of community college and how it, the stigma on it should be taken off because I think student loans are a scam. Um, but like, so there's just a lot of, of stuff in the book that has to do with that. And then also there's an entire chapter about freelancing. Um, because I think the gig economy is only growing. So I don't, I think it's tough to say this because I did this, but it's, I don't think you should do anything for free. Um, I also like when I was your age and I was doing jobs, I, oh, I don't know if I should say this. I didn't say what, how old I was. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I worked as a reporter without people knowing I was like 15. Mm -hmm. Um, because if the work is good, the work is good. Yeah. Um, but I, I think like, so yeah, I think like, don't undervalue yourself. Don't think that, well, I can't ask for this. I'm only a kid or I can't, you know, I, I think ask for competitive rates because they'll pay you. They should be paying you what they're paying anyone else who does that same work. Or even ask your friends if it be, you know, when I was doing YouTube, I still do it. But when I was doing it, it was like when we were get brand deals, we would find out that someone else was paid way more for the same brand deal. And if we had just known that ahead of time, we would have known what to ask for. Um, and so I think the worst thing that could happen is they go, no, how about this? And you go, okay. Um, I just, I know it's hard because I know I felt so much anxiety and I'm sure you do about even like, I felt like if someone found out I was working for this person, they would fire me. Like if I said, Hey, can I have this amount? They'd be like, what? We hired you get out of here. So I like totally get that. Um, but that's not going to happen. <laughs> and also, uh, with student, with like, um, going to college and stuff, I found out, I, I mean, I could do a dissert I could do a whole thing about this I found out you can negotiate your college tuition I, saw that. I gasped when I saw that in the isn't that the bananas book. they're just giving you a starting you don't have to accept that number and everybody's paying something different to go to college dude read it it's bananas yeah read the, read the there is truly there's so much like it's such a great resource and I think if my someone I can imagine someone buying this book for me when I was in high school and then me refusing to read it like a dickhead and then re and then finding it now and being like, I really fucked myself on that one, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, but I learned a lot. Like I had, yeah. no, I mean, that was my reaction when this woman was like, you know, you can like challenge what, what they offer. Like it's a, it's or a fin for financial aid. For and stuff. Yeah. No, but even for the even final for number of tuition, they, they, you can say, and I say in the book, I cannot imagine the high schooler who just goes, no dice. Yeah. Like, <laughs> who are you? But but I think, like, you really, they're not going to take, barring, like, you know, a, a fiasco, like a crazy fiasco, they're not going to take away your acceptance. Yeah. If you're, like, 750. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Piece of chewing gum. That's yeah. my final offer. <laughs> I what? I'm just kidding. <laughs> so I started listening to the podcast season one, and I'm like freaking out because I remember like walking through the strand and listening to it. And oh wow! Um, and I remember like you've talked about how much at the beginning it was you really working through your own anxieties about being bad with money. Um, and one of my favorite episodes is when I forget her name but you were talking to someone who was talking about like the latte theory and you were like hasn't that actually been widely disproved and she oh i know i'm not gonna put her on blast but i know who you're talking about yep and you, she kind of like avoided responding to that but you yeah. were like no but that actually has been disproved right yeah and i just i'm fun yeah fun at parties <laughs> but i love that because i thought like like how has it been for you working on the podcast and writing the book as like a form of working through your own like anxieties about money like I don't like you yeah. talk about that a lot but you also like are so gutsy to it's do it's been certainly awkward uh I did an event while I was here and the woman who like introduced it was like so don't get that Starbucks ladies and gentlemen and then the first thing I said was the latte factor has been debunked <laughs> and I was like oh well I mean I uh, like <laughs> I don't know I, and then I'm like well they won't have me back but so or maybe they will I don't know but it, it is like kind of awkward because there's these things that are so accepted and I believed them too and I and I be like believed it about everyone my age I believed it about myself and then like 
just doing some research, I was like, well, that's actually not really the best way to go about it. And then it it does butt heads with other pe- people. I mean, my first guest for season four, I don't know if you heard the the trailer, is Susie Orman. And so she, right, that's a whole story. Sh- she calls me. Um, it's fine. But so she, so we, so, uh, but we actually had a really interesting conversation because I, I think we're coming at, and we agreed to be like, you know, we're coming at this from different places. We're both queer women. Like we, you know, let's actually talk about this. Um, but I did, I did like challenge her a bit and she's very comp. She doesn't need, she doesn't care about me. Like she's very confident. Like it wasn't like, you know, it was like her being like, no, no, here's what I, in the promo, I said something about like, you know, do you feel like you're out of touch? And she's like, yeah, I live on a private island. I've earned it. Like she, which is like, that I is can't, f- I can't on, fault her. On one hand, you're right. It's like, what a you horrible, grotesque thing to say. Yeah. But on the other hand, what a baller thing to That's say. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, you can't, you can't be like, you, you, there's no. I felt like there's no way to argue. Yeah, you're right, girl. Yeah. There's no way to argue with that. Right. You're just like, well, what? Give me the longitude and latitude because I'm gonna burn island. it to the ground. No, no, I'm gonna, no. I guess burn it to the sea. <laughs> She's so sweet. She was like, you and your girlfriend should come to my island. When I and Ellen, my girlfriend was like, no, we're not doing that. I mean, no, uh, no good invitation has ever started that way. Come she's, to my island. We're yeah, getting murdered. You and your girlfriend sure. should come to my island. It's like, oh, sure. She's gonna graft some kind of like lion DNA into you. <laughs> That is the beginning of a horror movie yeah. as we fly into that island. No, she's very sweet. But it's just, you know, there's a lot of people that we agree to disagree. We come at it from different places. So it has been, I feel like this kid who kind of cramered her way into the Seinfeld apartment and was like, oh, I have thoughts. And then the I think there's been a little bit of like, okay. But it's interesting because I, I think a lot of young people are treated that way, right? Like, uh, like I wrote this book for people who ha- have like I think this has been my inclination and then older people go no you're wrong like the the craziest thing was like the Parkland activists like seeing them say well this isn't good we don't like this and then having older people and people in charge go oh, well you just don't understand how it works and they're like no no we understand how it works we're saying we don't like it and I think that's like with finance too is you're seeing a little bit of that of like this judgment of like, no, you just don't understand. That's like the way it works. And I'm like, no, no, no. I know how it works. I looked into it. It's bad. Um, so I hope there's m- there's more of that and people feel okay to say that. What a great answer. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh my God. Are you just like, wow, Gabby's good. You found, you figured that out for I the first time. I knew you were like, good. Yeah. I've, I have always said though that you have the personality of like child detective. <laughs> <laughs> Just like tenacious, like uh, um, Nancy Drew, that type. I w- literally, that's all I wanted to be when I grew up was mm-hmm. Nancy Drew and Harriet the Spy. Oh yeah, she was tenacious. Harriet the Spy didn't fuck around. And neither do I. Yeah. Oh. Gabby Dunn, everybody, bad with money. 